Hey guys, uh, I wanted to put together a quick video to just chat about uh, some of the news that's come out this week and today uh, regarding uh, the, the uh, attacks or the imminent attacks that we're being told on um, our healthcare systems uh, from Russia. And so I'm going to share my screen here and just jump right into it. Um, so most of you uh, in the healthcare industry, you've, you've probably been uh, scrambling this week and today. Um, as we've gotten the news, you know, you see it here from U.S. CERD or, you know, the, the, we see it on CBS News and then, you know, Krebs on security about, um, you know, imminent attacks on our uh, healthcare systems in the United States from Russia, um, particularly around the, uh, you know, the RIAC. Uh, ransomware, and we've already we've actually already seen this uh, a couple times already. Uh, and, and the real big one was uh, UHS recently. Um, but I wanted to kind of jump in and uh, talk about this a little bit with and with you know some of you guys are are my customers that are watching this, and there might be even some other account teams that have forwarded this along to you guys. Um, but if you look at that uh, Krebs on security. Um, uh, blog that he released if you scroll down on there it's actually it includes a list from mandiant of um list a list of domains and internet addresses used by riot right so i could i could click on that and I've, I've done that right here and this is this is that list right here um and then i've also got a blog here from talos um about riot and at the bottom of that blog there's tons of information about it if you look in the blog but at the very bottom, it's also got a list of IOCs, right, um, or indicators of compromise associated to that. So um, I've got that pulled up here on this on this screen. So one of the things we've talked about, you know, a lot of times, uh, those of you that I've talked with, um, we've talked about, you know, you get a something from your boss like, hey, are we are we vulnerable to this or um, how do you really quickly, you know, uh, implement uh, a list like this to uh, start blocking these across your across your environment? And you know, one of the things that we've some of you've seen me demo and look at is uh, you know the the browser plugin for Cisco Threat Response, right? So I come in here and I click this, and it's going to just do a quick uh, search and screen scrape for observables. You know that we've that Mandiant's listed out here, and I could do the same thing. You can see it's found 1,298. I could start that same process over here um, on the Talos IOCs, and you can see it's found 632. It takes takes a little bit of time to. Uh, you can see down there the message fetch uh, all these uh, all the observables and you know all the. Uh, dispositions of all of them you see it came back pretty quickly on this uh this talos one uh, this one's still churning away here um but on this this right here you can see 517 malicious 55 suspicious and 60 unknown so these malicious ones uh, they're going to um already have been blocked right they're known malicious the disposition's known bad so they're going to be blocked uh, across all of our cisco tools but the suspicious and unknowns, that's not uh, not necessarily the case, right? So maybe I want to come in here and um, I want to click this suspicious domain and I just want to block it right here through Umbrella. Shields up. I don't want to mess with it. This is a bad situation. We're a healthcare system. Let's block it and let's protect our, our environment, right? So really easy to do that straight from this browser plugin. Same thing is the a SHA-256 hash, we know it's malicious here, but if it was suspicious, I could come right here and I could just add it to a simple custom detection uh, or a, a basically a block list within AMP for endpoint. And my AMP, not just AMP for endpoint, but AMP um, in general, you know, the AMP everywhere, AMP in my firewalls, my uh, WSA web security appliance, my email security appliance, uh, blocking this uh, everywhere because if you read about Riot, it, you know, one of the ways it starts is social media, you know, phishing attacks. And so you're going to get some sort of file like this and hopefully you click on it and, and boom, they're off and running. So that gives me the ability to kind of just go shields up on all this. So I can, same thing over here, I pivot over here. I've got all these unknown suspicious, right? So I could just come in here straight from this browser plugin. I could just start 
right here blocking these SHA-256 hashes and these URLs and IPs. Um, now, I could also say, you know, my boss wants to know, hey, have we seen any of this activity within our environment? So I'm not going to search for all these across my environment, but I'm going to, you know, these say 98 suspicious. I can launch that investigation right here, and you can see it's pulling in these uh, 98 observables, and it's going to start searching for uh, any evidence of them across my uh, environment of all my Cisco so, uh, security solutions. So it's churning away. You can see that running right there, but I can really quickly get an idea um, if maybe we've seen some of this activity within our environment and then we can start reacting accordingly, right? <clears throat> um, so that's kind of how we could help you with our, with our solutions uh, in this situation. One of the other things I want to talk to you about a little bit is, you know, how could you start doing your own research, right? Using, uh, you know, MITRE and MITRE. If you're if you're familiar with MITRE, if you're not familiar with MITRE, I'd say go out and do some research. I'm not going to really, uh, you know, debrief you on what MITRE is, um, but it is a uh, um, it's a it's a great uh, organization uh, that helps us learn about. Uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures that are used uh, by not only in attacks, but by um, threat actors, right? So if you kind of dive in and start looking at the RIAC ransomware, um, the, 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 uh, the um, threat groups that are behind it are a lot of times are, are t tend to be a group called Thin6 and then another one called Spider or Wizard Spider. Right, so with this uh, uh, MITRE attack tool, I'm able to come in here and I've gone in here and I've created a tab for Fin6 and you can see I just came over here um, in my selections and I got threat, known threat groups and they create this awesome tool that allows you to come in here and select, you know, the the right here and show me all the tactics and techniques that are used by Fin six, right? And then I can then I've done the same thing for Wizard Spider here. <clears throat> um, and I've got those highlighted. And then I've come here and I've said, hey, show me since both of these are known to be behind this Riot uh, ransomware uh, and using that uh, commonly using that in attack. So show me where uh, these two. Oh, sorry about that. Um, these two are, are used, uh, both of them are used, right? So you can see here, I've got this uh, right here and these right here in the red are my Fin6 attacks and the, uh, in the yellow, these are my attacks used by, or techniques and tactics used by uh, Wizard Spider and in the green, that's where they, these are ones that they both tend to use, right? So maybe this is where I'd want to start at figuring out how I can put some mitigations in place uh, or some, some, put some, some stuff in place to mitigate um, you know, these types of techniques right here. So if I click on you know, this uh, Windows management here and I could come over here and say view the technique and I could drill down here and it's got all this information but the uh, really cool thing at the end of it, it's got mitigations, right? So here's how I could go mitigate this. Um, and I could, I could go through this and do it for that. Then also I've created a tab here um, that's just the uh, Riot software, right? So this talks about, you know, utilizing native APIs, right? Um, it's got access token manipulation, access. So you can kind of come through here um, and, and look at uh, exactly how, again, look at the technique there that they're utilizing and how do I go mitigate that, right, within this tool. So this one doesn't have any mitigations here, but um, you could come through here and do that. Again, you can use this tool. You can drill down. So this is the high-level um, technique. If I drill down a little bit, you can see... Um, I start to see, um, you know, it drills into that uh, native API, right? And it drills into that access token manipulation and shows you exactly which one they're using here 
uh, registry run keys uh, startup folder, right? So um, again, getting I can get more information about that here. So uh, just giving you guys some ideas of how you can go out and be proactive uh, within your environment and start doing some threat hunting and start protecting against you know these two uh, two threat groups that commonly use Riot and then the Riot software. Then you can see right here. I've, I've again I've gone and built another comparison model here um, that just shows you know uh, on this it shows fin six tactics techniques it shows uh, wizard spider and then it shows ryak and it shows a combination of them so uh hopefully uh this helps quick before i let you go i wanted to just go back over to the ctr um demo that i did and we were looking at the you know, the RIAC, um, you know, uh, all the all the observables and IOCs and, you know, the Krebs on Security <clears throat> blog and the Talos blog about that. But, you know, and, and I did the search there and, and really come, came up with nothing because I didn't have any, any of those indicators within my environment. So I wanted to just show you exactly how the, how the uh, CTR functionality would work uh, in a lab situation where I do have, um, you know, some some devices that have been compromised. So I've got this blog pulled up on the remote access Trojan here. <clears throat> and, you know, just like before, it's got tons of information about that. This remote access Trojan, I could go um, you kind of get up to speed with what's going on here. But ultimately at the bottom, it's got IOCs and uh, observables, you know, that uh, related to this remote access Trojan. So I go up to my CTR browser plugin, just like we did before. It's going to search across the, this this uh, blog. It's going to screen scrape it, pull up all these 20 observables, and just like before, I could take actions here on these. But I, I want to show you the investigation here. Um, so if I do the investigation, and you know, I know that uh, my my lab environment has been compromised with this, so I'm going to start. I'm going to see some. Uh, we're going to be able to see how we would exactly do um, some threat hunting here with CTR. So we'll give this a second to pull in these 19 um, uh, observables and enrich them with um, information. So give this a second. You can see up here, you can, it's pulled in 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's quickly pulling them in. And, and as it's enriching those, what it's doing is it's going out. And you see down here at the bottom or right here, <clears throat> along the side here, um, it's it's actually pulling in information about each one of these, right? So it's this, we've got this uh, URL here. It's found 102 judgments, five verdicts, um, you know, 100 different sightings. There's none in my environment here, as we can see, but these are globally, um, you know, information globally about it. So the judgments you can see here, the umbrella API, Talos investigate, uh, COVID-19 cyber threat coalition. So, you know, some different um, judgments, what they think about it, verdicts, uh, umbrella, Talos, verdicts, different sighting information. Uh, so it's pulling in it's, and it's doing that for every one of these, all 19. So it takes a little bit of time, but you can see here it's finished up and, uh, it gives me this pretty little picture here in addition to all that information. Um, and, you know, obviously it's probably hard, kind of hard to see that. So I'll drill in here for, for you guys. Um, I can see right away I've got two targeted devices um, here. I've got, and you can drop down those. You see information about them. I could right click here on these and I could start to, um, <clears throat> you know, take some actions. It's very similar to the API integration we saw from the, CTR browser plugin. Um, you can see some of the actions I could take through SecureX and AMP and so on and so forth. Um, you know, I could come over here and click down on this device here and um, see more, you know, more more information and more actions I could take. But um, but ultimately, I've got I can see that right away. I got information about the 19 observables here. I could remove them from my investigation. I've got 15 related items. Um, so these are items that we feel, that we feel like are related to this investigation. And I could add those to the investigation right here. And we'll do that here in a second. And then I've got, um, you know, seven uh, modules that it searched across. So firepower, I saw two sightings 
on Firepower. I didn't see any on Amphor Endpoint, but I got five judgments from there. I got Umbrella, got seven different modules that pulled it, it pulled across this information across. <clears throat> so right away, I mean, I could easily go up here and I could just start adding some of these related items, especially these ones that are malicious. Um, but I'm going to, let's kind of take a look at this um, visual diagram it puts together for me. So I can see here with the little hourglass deal here, uh, magnifying glass that it, it shows. These are items that were part of my search. So this, this right here, this drink food URL, it was part of my, uh, one of the observables that I pulled in from that, from that, uh, or indicators of compromise from that uh, blog, that Talos blog. So it looks like here that that URL targeted this, uh, this desktop here, and this desktop connected to this IP. Now this IP, public IP address, it's, it's not part of my investigation. So right away, this might be something I want to add. So I, I showed you how I could come up here and click and add something to my investigation. And we can see right here that public IP is also right here as a related item. But I could also... Um, I can also add that that uh, public IP right here and just click uh, add to investigation. And it's going to pull in that IP and it's going to go out there and search and enrich, uh, provide all the information we know about it and, and contextual information about that. And so we'll wait for that to pull in and then it's going to search across all of our modules in our, in our security portfolio, our Cisco security portfolio for any uh, sightings um, of of that IP address. So you can see here, we've got 19 of the 20. We started with 19, we added that one. So we're waiting for, for this to uh, go out and do all the searching. Um, we'll, we'll see what it pulls in for us. It usually takes, takes a little bit of time, but there we go. Uh, we can already see right away that uh, we got something going on here, right? So we've got, uh, I'm gonna, and you can see here, I can drag and drop, move this stuff around and, you know, make it easier to view for me. Um, but you can see right away, zoom in here for you guys. Um, there you go. I've got five targets now. So I've got uh, my marble um, desktop. It's running Windows 10. I've got Granite running Windows 10. Uh, so and then I've got some other IPs here. Um, again, I got the AMP GUID here on this desktop. I could right click on it. Bad situation. I could start isolation here. So with right with AMP for endpoint, I could just say isolate this. And so this could be on my network at the corporate headquarters, or it could be at a coffee shop or at home. I could isolate this device uh, no matter where it's at, as long as it's uh, connected uh, to the uh, internet. Um, it's, it's available for me to isolate and it takes about 200 milliseconds from clicking this button and they're isolated and the only thing they can connect to is the AMP cloud for uh, remediation. So again, I can see these targets. Uh, I'm starting to pull in some additional information. Uh, there's my original URL in the IP that uh, this is the IP that we just added to our investigation. I can see this IP is connecting to a couple other URLs um it's connecting a couple of my uh, devices connected to it and then i've got the sha256 hash that's out here that uh is connected to this ip um and that's not part of my investigation so again probably you know something i want to start adding some of this stuff to my investigation like this url here this sha256 hash i'm gonna i'm gonna start there and just add this to the investigation and see, you know, where it, where it takes us. And again, this is just kind of part of the threat hunting <clears throat> exercise here. And we're, we'll pull this in. It's going to go out and, uh, again, search for that across our network. We'll give it a second here. Enrich that. Uh, provide contextual information and search across all of our modules. And we didn't look last time when we pulled in that 20, but you can see here um, we've got more modules now that are a part of this. Um, so we've got 21 um, enriched um, observables that we've added to our investigation. Now we've got 10 targets. 
We've got slate now that's a part of it. We already had marble before. There's quartz running Windows 10 Pro. Again, I could click on these and start taking remediation actions right from here. I've got 42 related items now. I can see we've searched across 10 or 11 modules. So um, I've got Gigamon, third party uh, solution that ties into CTR. It is an open platform. So uh, any, any, um, Third party can can basically uh, uh, tie in their tool via our APIs to, to CTR. Uh, we've got the web security, one siding, firepower, stealth watch now, email. <clears throat> so we're starting to see this. Umbrella's got a siding, and for endpoint, 105 sightings. So we've we've definitely got something going on here. And if you start to to move this stuff around and and figure out what's going on here. Um, let's see here if we can get a, get a little prettier picture here. Um, but I've got this SHA-256 hash and I can see that it's, you know, the file names, three file names, there they are, midyearbonus.com. Um, so there, there's the file names, um, of the SHA-256 hash within my network. I've got a couple other SHA hashes that are tied to it. <clears throat> Um, I can see the file paths of it where they're stored here. Five file paths right here. Drop those down. Um, I've got the uh, the locations of where it's stored at. But I can start to see that this SHA-256 hash has a, came in via an email ID, right? And the email ID we had a subject here, email subject of mid-year bonus. So mid-year bonus is here. So it's starting to look like we had, you know, an, a phishing attack, maybe. Um, I've got the, the malicious domain that sent the, I, that the, it's tied to that email address. It's uh, internetbadguys.com. And I've got the email address, hr-admin at internetbadguys.com. So, you know, in a matter of minutes, we pulled in. Uh, some information about uh, about you know a remote access Trojan that Talos has published. We did a quick uh, threat hunt there, and um, we we determined you know very quickly that we've we've been hit by this, and it came in via a, a phishing email uh, that was targeted to a couple different users, and we can we can uh, see the target uh, the target emails right here and. Um, and over here in our 10 targets up here. So um, <clears throat> again, just uh, kind of showing you the power of CTR and how you can use that in a, in a threat hunt. I uh, hope this helps. And if you got any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out and I'll, I'll help you as much as I can. Thanks. Have a great day.